Welcome to another chat. Good to see you, Jack, as always. How are you doing, Dave? So today we're going to talk about uh, the stock market game. And I think we're saying that just because of the time of what's going on. There's been a lot of crazy volatility. There's in the news right now, GameStop and all these things with um, institutional investors versus the retail investors. And I just think it's a really interesting topic. And it, it definitely plays to what we always talk about and preach, which is really, really the behavioral side of investing and how it's difficult not to get caught up. So, um, man, what do you think about this whole, let's start with just GameStop and what's going on give us a little background and kind of what you know and where we're at and what you think. Oh man, it was, it was one of these things that just took on a, it kind of took on a life of its own, but it had all the, you know, it had all the makings of like a good story, you know, there's like, good versus evil it's the david versus goliath there's a get rich quick aspect to it i can participate there's like a lottery aspect to it there's a, a you know anytime the real lottery is you know it's just like a billion dollars a, a week or two ago it's like it just becomes like the number one news story like it was just one of those things it was and it happened so quickly you know the thing about it was that it was a good kind of canvas for anybody to put whatever their kind of prior beliefs on it the stock market's a game. It's rigged. Uh, the big institutional people don't want the small guy making money. Like it's, it was just anything that you thought you could use the whole GameStop story to prove that, oh, see, I told you this is right. like all a game or it's broken or all this stuff. I think, <laughs> I think more the reality was there was just like a, you know, like there's, there's thousands of stocks it isn't surprising that every once in a while I get these crazy movements in stocks because of just a confluence of events that all come together that make something happen. I think it was a big, a combination of a lot of things. You know, it's like GameStop has been, if you know the Michael Burry guy, the big short guy, if you've seen that movie, he was the guy that was shorting the housing market. He's a, uh, what's his face? Batman. Who played Batman? Christian Bale. Christian Bale. So Christian Bale in the movie this is Michael Burry. And he, he, it was out a while ago and he was big on, on GameStop. Um, so it's not like this was an unknown thing. This was kind of a, a name that people had some interest in anyways. They brought on a new guy who was the, I believe he was the CEO of Chewy and then he left and he got a seat on the board and he's been a big activist investor saying if they started changing towards a more online subscription or something, he got a seat on the board. There's just a lot of things. Those are real catalysts. And then there's also, it was cheap. And it was heavily shorted. There's all kinds of market uh, structure things that were at play. The whole Reddit thing, the people getting squeezed on the upside, all these different things happened. I think all of those things are factors and it just kind of took off. And then once it took off, it was a new story. So, but like I said, I just think it's something that you can, anything that you thought you could apply to it and it pretty much would work. So, Well, and I think this is one of those times where this isn't a, um, you know, Debbie Downer, if you're buying GameStop, you know, you're losing money because there's, I think that it's easy to forget that there are two sides yeah. to investing, right? There's a buy and a sell. So if I'm buying it today, somebody is set, has to sell me their shares. And conversely, this, the same thing happens. If you own it and you sell it, well, somebody's buying it up. So there's two sides of this equation. Somebody, if we pick on GameStop, probably bought it super duper low and maybe sold it 350, 400. I don't even know what the, the high has been, but at the same time, there's been someone else on the other side of the equation that has bought it at 300, 400 or whatever, and is now either faced with it at, I don't know what it is today, but I know it's, it's been down about a hundred, a hundred points in the last you know, couple of days anyway. Do they sell it? And if so, somebody else has to buy it. So this is like a back and forth thing where it's not just you know, everybody loses money or everybody wins money. And I think most of most of us forget about that aspect because we get caught up in the, I guess the news part of it is like, oh man, did you hear what's going on? And people are getting killed or the institutional investors are losing billions of dollars. Yeah, there's definitely a, it's not such a clean story where like every, all, all the small guys bought it at $10 all of them sold it at 450 or something. And then everybody else has written it down. There's like just a big mix of people in there. And the market has kind of 
you know, it's indifferent. It doesn't matter what you're trying to do. It just kind of goes up and down. And there's lots of people with competing goals that will be involved in it. And there's really no remorse as far as the market is concerned. It doesn't matter. You can make money and you can lose money. The market is irrelevant. It's just people trading stocks. It's it's people, some people are buying, some people are selling, and there's two sides to every transaction. So to your point, I mean, yeah, there's probably somebody that bought it at $10 or something and wrote it up to 450, which is incredible. Uh, but like you said, there's somebody who, <laughs> who had to buy it if you sold it at 450 and it's like a hundred dollars now, it's down, I don't know, it's like 50% today it's down. So, and who knows, it could go back up. I have no idea. It's all over the place. I think anytime these things happen, you have to think about like, what would it really be like to be in the middle of this? It's easy to, in hindsight, say, ah, I would have done X, Y, Z and been just fine. I would have bought it in 10 and yeah, I would have wrote it to 400 had I bought it, but Duh. yeah, right. But can you imagine buying something at $10 and I mean, good grief. It's $50 even. That's a lot. Five times your money in a week or something or two days. Like it would it just start to mess with you because that's like, or that's real money. Five times your money in a week or two can, not to mention if it's 100 or 200 and you're doing 10, 20, 30 times your money in a matter of weeks, like it just would start to mess with you in all kinds of ways. And you know, do you sell it? And if you sell it, are you going to have remorse if it goes from 50 to hundred and do you get back in? And it just all these games that you would start playing with yourself because you just kind of took a gamble on it and there's no real roadmap for that. Right. right. And I think that those two words resonate. It, it is a mental game that we can sit here and talk about it and, and look back and say, oh, I could have showed a wood or whatever, which we could do about a, a number of things and the careers that we've had here in finance. Um, but there is, if you're doing this type of thing, which God bless you, if you're doing it and you love it and you're having fun, but it is some sort of a gamble. There's no, nothing to say that that thing couldn't turn around and go up 700, right? We talked about this earlier, Bitcoin. I mean, I haven't heard about Bitcoin in forever, but I do remember People talking about Bitcoin when it was, you know, four or five, a thousand bucks a share. And it's gone all over the place, but I, I think it's up 10,000% or something stupid. Yeah, something. Well, I mean, yeah, depending on when you're, well, it's, it was, you know, it was 5,000 and then it went to 20, like the end of, I guess it would have been eight, uh, 17 or 18, I don't remember exactly. And then it went all the way back down to four. And then just recently it's gone you know, maybe in the last six or eight months, it went from four or five or something to 30, almost 40. Now it's maybe, you know, it's just kind of all over the place. There's definitely some people that would say, I'm just going to hold it. And, you know, it's kind of, they've kind of ridden the wave, but there's a lot, I mean, man, what a tough thing to try to navigate that. If you, you know, there's, you have a significant amount of money. It's one thing to put $10,000, whatever you think would be a decent sum of money to you. I don't know what that would be. But if you put a decent sum of money into something and then it gets to the point where it's a large chunk, like 90% of your net worth, because it's just kind of taken off, man, it's hard to know when those numbers get that big that quickly, what you're going to do about it. And once you get that high of 300% or 500% returns in weeks, man, those, you know, that 9% a year looks <laughs> like boring. Like, right. And you how, just, do you go, how do you go back? How do you, how, do you yeah. go, how do you go back to just the boring, I'm just gonna own an index fund and let it ride and percolate and yeah. then, you know, 10 year period, I'll probably get seven, eight, maybe nine. Yep. And I just think you keep chasing that. I think it depends. If you're, if you were, you know, 20 years ago when it was like tech bubble, it was very, I think it was very similar to these types of things. If I remember cor correctly, I do absolutely remember I was in college, so this was like, you know, we were just all young, just wanted to be get rich quick or whatever. And I, man, I remember like, it was like every day there was some something.com or some internet adjacent company that would come out and it would like IPO the first day and be up 200% or a hundred percent. It was nuts. It was crazy. And we just thought like, oh, this is like a normal thing. Like we thought it was wild, but it was just like a normal thing. And this is how things are going to go. I didn't have any experience. And it was, oh, this is, you know, it's a new day. This is how things go now. You need to get in on this. And 
you know, two years later, the stuff's down 90%. Some of it went out of business and never came back. And, you know, it took 10 years just to get back to where it was previously. And that's even companies like, you know, like Amazon was down 90%. For Microsoft, sure. all these companies were, these are good companies and they were down 70, 80, 90%. And riding that wave, like I said, would be a hard thing to do. I, but I think it's more just if you get something like that and you have some experience, maybe you're a little bit more like, man, I got lucky. But if you're 25 or something and you you get this, man, you're going to be chasing that like forever, that, that, that ride of 500% in two weeks or something. Right. So I think there's, you know, probably a few principles we could pull out of this, this uh, discussion. I think one of them would be Having a plan ahead of time will probably alleviate at least some sort of stress because the decision's already made, right? And there's nothing wrong with day trading or playing the stock market, but I would say for a serious long-term investor, that emotional roller coaster would kill you. So maybe the, the majority of the focus should be on something that's maybe a little bit more boring, but at least has a process that can be repeated or repeated and then if you want to take some other money and I guess quote unquote gamble with it a little bit, play the stock market, cool. But just don't put your whole net worth in, all right, I'm going to do this game stock thing and I'll pay off the mortgage in two weeks. Because if you don't, look out. Right. Yeah, I think if you take, you know, if you're taking 5% or something of your liquid net worth, you know, you don't, don't borrow money on your house or something to uh, be a jackass and gamble in the stock market. But if, you, yeah, if you're taking 1% or 5% of your net worth and you're just like, ah, oh, these are just things that I like to do. And these are crazy companies and they could be zeros and it wouldn't affect me. And the other 95% of what I've got going is pretty, you know, I have a plan in place. I kind of stick with it. I'm patient. This is going to be over the long term. Honestly, most people are just going to do far better getting good returns for a long time than getting fantastic returns for a year. Like you're just going to do way better over time. If you're getting good returns for a long time, you'll be way better off than if you just kind of shoot the lights out one out of every nine years or something. Right. Um, like, yeah. I need to go back to the gambling, but you know, if you've been to Vegas, you like to gamble a little bit. I think it's fun. I don't get too caught up in it, but you know, if I've been there seven times, I definitely would. I didn't pay my mortgage off by going there. <laughs> if anything, it's like, it's a, uh, you know, I view it as it's just an expense. It's a part of the vacation. I'm not going out there to try to win money, but you definitely can experience the highs and lows. Uh, that, that's very similar if you're even watching your boring portfolio every day. It's up one day, down the next day. You can't make yeah. decisions like that. Um, I don't think it'd be successful over time. I think sometimes there's there's more than enough excitement in, the, in just a regular old stock market much less some of these things are just all over the place. I mean, I just can't imagine, like if you had a, if I had a significant amount of money, like a significant amount of my net worth, let's say, in something like a GameStop or any of these things that have just really taken off, I just think it would be hard to stick with it and hold on to it and just ride that wave and not either want to sell it or be regretful because you sold it or something like that. I mean, that's more to your point of just like have a plan in place. If you're putting you know, you have 5% of your net worth and you're just going to goof off. Like if you take 1% of something and it takes off and it becomes 15% of your net worth, you know, maybe you just, I'll pair, I'll trim that back so that it's 3% or something, have some kind of plan. So they just don't get blasted, um, in the long run. So I think it's more just a, it's a, it's not, the worst thing in the world, number one, it's not like, you know, if you want to buy those kinds of things and, and take some risk with some money, I don't think that it's the worst thing in the world. I think it would be reckless to do it with a large percentage of what you have and definitely with a percentage of what you need. I mean, if you're gambling money that you need, then you're really kind of on the edge of collapse, but otherwise it's fine. I think it, as part of a well-balanced plan of things, having some really kind of super duper aggressive money, I think is fine. As long as you keep it within reason and don't, you know, kind of blow yourself up, I think it would be fine. Yeah. I like that. I, I like the, you know, 5%, maybe 10% of what you're doing. If you enjoy doing that, you know, by all means go for it. Yeah. 
Yeah, just keep some parameters around it and don't destroy yourself. Yeah. If anything, I think if there if, if there's another lesson to pull from it, maybe you teetered with this, right? Like, I mean, we listen, we've seen enough opportunities in our career to think, oh man, if yes. only I would have, what if I should have? And then the next opportunity comes around. We just went through this in last year, March of last year. It's like, man, this thing's down 55%. In a short period of time, now's a great opportunity, but you don't really know when it's going to turn around. So maybe, maybe these are the things where just put a little bit in there, mess around with it, get a yep. taste of your emotional ride, and maybe it will, it'll kind of uh, fill that need, fill that urge to experience it. Maybe it'll put things into perspective. Like, okay, I can see how this would be like detrimental to like large amounts of um, my money, and I'm just not willing to do that. Maybe a huge risk taker and it's a lot of fun, but I think having parameters going into it, um, a checks at some sort of parameters to get out of it or to, to keep you in this kind of, you know, maybe it's 5% or 10% or whatever you want. But um, by all means, we've, we've seen a lot of stories over the past and not just in stocks, right? We've seen it in house flipping and other business ventures that you just it's hard to kind of get out of your own way when you, you've hit several home runs in a row. Yes. I think the good thing, you know, one of the many great things about being on this side and kind of being in the flow, all, the flow of it all the time is one, I mean, these things are not, not on my radar. Like I knew GameStop stuff. I mean, it's not like, it's not some rando stock that I just heard about. Like I, GameStop was like, it was definitely, something that was talked about. I've mentioned the Michael Burry thing. Like this is, these, it was in news stories. This was a thing uh, for a while. <laughs> you, I definitely think, oh man, I, it's not like I know about GameStop. It's something that I knew. But then I have to remind myself that I hear hundreds of these things. Like I hear tons of names about how all these things could be great. Of course, most of the ones I hear about are dogs and don't do anything and they probably lose all their money. It's the few that stick out in my mind that make you think like, oh, next time I hear somebody say something about something, I'll put so much money into it and I'll make all my money. But chances are most of those things that you hear are garbage and they're not going to make any money. And if you beat yourself up about the ones you didn't invest in, you should at least give yourself some credit for the ones that you skipped and that were dogs, even though you might have forgotten them. The other point to make is about being on the side is a million percent. We have had people that have done these things where they put lots of money or a significant portion of money in things against our advice. They buy it, it's super risky. We tell them so and say, oh, well, you can do whatever you would like to do. My suggestion would be to minimize it or have some kind of plan going into it. They put tons of money into it. We have had people buy things, it go down 90%, they sell it and it goes up a thousand percent. I promise you that has happened. We've had people that have owned Tesla and sold it before it was up 800%. I mean, like almost to the day, like before it started taking off. Like it, these are the kind of things that, I, and I don't know any better. I can't tell you what to do. Cause I don't, I'm, there's no, I'm guessing as much as you're guessing. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody, nobody would have been able to say some Tesla stock would go from whatever it was at the time, $200 to, you know, some $2,000 or something. I, I think that that would be any, that's guessing. And it's luck. And I think relying on that is foolish or beating yourself up because you missed it is foolish too, because just, you just kind of got unlucky. So yeah. anyways, tough game to play that <laughs> thing called the old stock market. Yeah. So I guess we cl close it out with, uh, as we always say, have a plan before you get into it, reach out to us. We're going to talk about the stuff we like, obviously talking about it and researching it and all that stuff. So good to see you, Jack. Happy Tuesday. Okay, see ya.